You know, there's really been a very genuine and a frequent complaint which has become rather strident of late is that uh, television writing doesn't receive its due attention and place when we're discussing screenwriting. In fact, the name of the association is Film Writers Association, whereas it actually includes uh, television writers. Point absolutely taken. Even in the previous conference, uh, there was no session on television. This time we have a full-fledged session, but this is really a kickoff session because television writing is extensive and it's different from film writing. So we need to have an entire conference or at least a one-day seminar which is dedicated to examining all the contours of that uh, Right, right, right. I can see there are a few television writers here. Thank you. Now, this session, as I told you, is a kickoff ses session, so it sort of tackles all the basic uh, changes, essentially, in the post Doordarshan area. There's really been a sea change in television writing, television programming, viewership, content, and the internal dynamics between writer, director, producer, and channel. So, those issues will be addressed right now by the panelists who, have, who are extremely experienced in the field of television. So first and foremost, I call upon a person who, to use a cliche, genuinely needs no introduction. It's Mr. Lake Tundan, please. <laughs> Mr. Tundan has worked with cinema for the last four decades handling subjects sensitively, dealing with relationships, nuances of morality in relationships. <laughs> and he's also proved himself on television, and he's still going strong. Wonderful. Uh, the next person is somebody who has sort of established a mini, okay, empire <laughs> in television, <laughs> Atish Kapadia who has regaled us with Babahu or Baby, Khichdi, and several other films, several other serials, which while cloaked in the treatment of humor, has really sort of broken new ground in television programming. Followed by a <clears throat> person who began with Swabhiman and then went on to Kitty Party and has become a respected name in television writing as well as teaching television script writing. Mr. Vinod Ranganath, please. And then to tackle the key issue of the working conditions of television writers, okay, and their professional status and the difficulties and roadblocks that they face, is a person who is from the executive committee of the Film Writers Association and has been spearheading the model contract for television writing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Rajesh Dubey. He's our television commando. And uh, of late, Three weeks ago, there was a film released called Das Vidanya. While it may not have fared very well at the box office, it did receive a lot of uh, critical acclaim as well as appreciation from all sort of right thinking people. And who has done a lot of reality shows on television, including the great comedy show and others. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the young Turk, Arshad Sayyad. <laughs> Needless to say, Lekji, it's in your capable hands and voice. You need to keep the session compact. We're running sort of late. So make sure that your panelists stick to their time schedule and let the questions please be pertinent yeah, and crisp. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. What are you doing? You have also done it yourself a little bit. We have told you that you have to feel yourself क्या हम टीवी वाले क्या हैं और क्या करना चाहिए क्या होना चाहिए टीवी इस मुल्क के लिए कोई नई चीज नहीं है एक रेबिन नाइट्स शायद आप सब जानते होंगे कथा सागर आप सब जानते होंगे ये सब एपिसोड ही थे लेकिन जब से ये चैनल घुसे हैं ना मुसीबतें तब शुरू हुई हैं उन मुसीबतों का जिक्र करने के लिए हम सब इकट्ठे हुए एक जिक्र मैं आउट ऑफ द वे करना चाहूंगा कि जिस तरह हमें ट्रीट किया जाता है राइटरों को चैनल में आ, वैसे कुछ लोग बर्दाश्त भी कर लेते हैं और उसके साथ चलते भी हैं लेकिन कुछ बर्दाश्त नहीं कर पाते <laughs> तो <laughs> तो ज़्यादा वक्त ना लेते हुए मैं कहूँगा कि लेट स्टार्ट आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट कपाडिया जी टू पुट इज पेपर पुट इज
Well, <coughs> well, basically I'm here to say and uh, discuss my observations on the changing trends of Indian Hindi TV programming. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll keep my pleasantries brief since I have 10 precious minutes and about half a lifetime of my writing experience to talk about. To be honest, after a very long time, I'm reading something which I've written without worrying about what TRPs it will generate. <laughs> it's been a very, very long time. In fact, the rating race is going to become such an influence on television writers that one might start making three drafts of even an email. I won't be surprised. But not very long ago, the scenario was different. The time when I started writing Hindi television serials was a time when competitive satellite programming had arrived. Z, Sony, and Star were the front runners. And the alternate to good old Doordarshan. I began writing shows like Alpaviram and Ek Mahalo Sapnoka. This was before the Star Plus era had begun when, you know, really popular programming took over. So, I began writing Alpaviram and Ek Mahalo Sapnoka. And those were the times when the writer, the creative producer, and the channel, like Lekji said, put their heads together to create a show, whether one liked it or not. Sometimes they called the director also. But that was the general scenario. But, and I mean a but in capital letters, although that was an accepted norm of working, it certainly wasn't the rule. And I'm talking purely out of my own experiences. The moment I convinced the producer and the channel about my conviction over the said shows, a hell lot of freedom and space was given to me. Probably I was fortunate. Suggestions were given, but so was the freedom of choice. I was allowed to keep or reject all those suggestions, so whichever I thought was pertinent. Nothing, and I repeat, nothing was ever forced down on me. I wrote what I believed in, and I succeeded. I was writing a daily and a weekly, but the time entirely and certainly belonged to weekly shows then. The late 90s, if I may say. Yeah, I think about the late 90s. I remember extracting about six to eight days a month to write the entire month's episode. I used to feel happy, cheerful, and I remember breaking into a jig once in a while, once my monthly writing was over. And then, like a chilling twist in the story of life, the age of dailies arrived. I remember a friend of mine saying, hey, I've been watching this fantastic daily soap since a few months, Atish. What lovely saris, what exquisite jewelry, and what a breathtaking house. And yes, in one or two episodes, there was some story too. <laughs> and mind you, she was not being sarcastic. She was certainly not being sarcastic, which is why I prefer to call this particular age, about eight to nine years of television, as the age of glamorous TV programming. The audience attention had to be held day after day and there was competition pouring, on, pouring in from all sides. And so most writers resorted to gimmicks, sensational cliffhangers and over-the-top storytelling. In the guise of some pseudo-middle-class Indian value system, a whole lot of exaggerated ultra-rich families displayed their histrionics day and night at a breathtaking pace and well managed to take the audience's breath away. Almost every show was a clone of the other, and many a shows repeated their first few hundred episodes with a generation leap. What with a new generation facing the same old problems that their you know, pr generation prior to them had faced. The same story, the same episodes, and even that worked. Why and how, God alone knows. In fact, when parodies and satires on the bizarre nature of these shows were presented at award ceremonies, the makers laughed the loudest. And yes, they laughed their way loudest to the bank too. This lifestyle and glamour-laden programming that the moment a show displayed a drop in ratings, a gun was put on the writer's head. A kind of television terrorism, if I may say so, you know. I have known of writers having nervous breakdowns and hospitalization of TV writers was not a very uncommon uh, feature. But, and this one too is in capital letters, because although that was a practice, it certainly wasn't the rule. Before I talk about the exceptions to this norm of television writing, let me briefly talk about two principal differences that I've observed between the pre-daily and the post-daily soap age. I recently was discussing my show Alpaviram with a chartered accountant friend of mine, and he happened to say, oh, you mean the show which had Pallavi Joshi's character getting molested while she was in a coma? I was amazed and after 11 years he remembered the plot very clearly. The reason is quite obvious. Shows during those times were more plot driven. You know. 
Since writers had the luxury of writing only five episodes a month, they could devote more time and attention to the plot, and episodes had a reasonably good structure and a genuine pace in its storytelling. In comparison, a daily almost always, almost I would say, almost always displayed a pseudo tempo, and shows started becoming more character driven. Once a character was, you know, it, it was kind of entrenched in the minds of the audience, they just went on doing whatever they could with the character and things happening around a particular character, and people lapped it up. And, and they resorted to several gimmicks, be it effects, chants, bellowing music, or over-dramatic, somewhat unnatural camera movements, or dollops of tears shed over some melodramatic moment. And all this usually central, you know, centralized around one particular female character. You know, The males were just relegated to the background wearing suits and uh, uh, going around in fancy cars. But that was the case, and it succeeded. Whenever I used to see these shows, now this is something which I'm very objectively saying, whenever I used to watch these kind of shows, you know, they, they seem to resemble the cacophony that farmers resort to in order to drive elephants away from their fields, seriously. You know, because there was so much noise. Uh, I've been given explanation that the noise is there to actually attract the housewife who's also, you know, making rotis. So if dar 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 happens, she comes and she takes a look. Ah, cha cha. Okay, this one has uh, killed that one, or this one has robbed that one's husband, as and you know, as the story would go. And it worked again. But I felt that you know the the these shows are, were becoming very repetitive, and I I do not know. I do not know if the elephants were driven away by this cacophony or not, but audience certainly were drawn in by the millions. You know, the rating charts were you know going like nowhere. It was all up north, up north, up north, and every other uh, show was celebrating ratings which are unheard of. I'm talking about the post Doordarshan, of course. Doordarshan has seen some ratings like 80s and 90s compared to the 15s and 16s of the daily soap era. You know, but even that was a great achievement by those. Uh, success, I would say, not achievement by those shows. And by, while I'm saying all this, I must make it very clear that I'm neither praising it or nor criticizing it. I'm just making a pure observation. You know, That's what I'm here for. The second important difference is that the pre-daily programming had some reasonably interesting characterization and dialogue writing compared to the dailies. There was a substantial amount of detailing in the language, dialect, lingo, or say the overall behavior of characters. And it was closer to reality. Characters were multidimensional, and the dailies in comparison were loaded with colorful sets, costumes, and property, but the characterization started becoming black or white, sometimes totally off color. Sometimes, besides being single dimensional, they were also downright corny and unintentionally hilarious. I remember a, a fellow actor whom we had approached for one of our weekly comedy shows recently telling me, why me? I have only played a vamp in a daily soap. I have never done comedy. To which I added, that's what you think, my dear. <laughs> and well, we did cast her in the show. I can speak for hours on the differences between the pre and post daily scenario and most of the differences will even seem a tad too obvious but the truth is that this style of writing has gone through you know a huge metamorphosis which has eventually resulted in a new form of tv writing which i prefer to call interactive tv writing you know and as the TV programming trend has begun, yet another metamorphosis very recently, writers have again begun concentrating more on content and a variety of stories are now being told simultaneously on different channels. The audience has started giving up their channel loyalty and are becoming program loyal now. You know, actually, uh, remote controls are being flicked by the second, you know, by segment to segment, they are switching from one show to the other, you know. And uh, the audience is getting the best of many, many worlds. But Yet another capital letter one. The age of interacting, interactive writing is here to stay. Allow me to say that a lot of my fellow and senior writers have displayed an aversion to write in association with other heads who are not always writers, writers, you know. It has since the past few years become a fashion to revel in past glory and run down people working at channels and people working as creative heads for production houses. While I may agree that there are quite a few pseudo-intellectual men and women masquerading as highly creative people, not everyone sitting across the fence is a fool. And I say this with great delight that as far as my experiences go, most of the people who joined us in the process of interactive TV writing were very intelligent, qualified, and experienced. And above all, there was a wisdom that they displayed when they gave us the freedom to write what we believed in. If you as a writer display command on your craft and show conviction in your storytelling, channels 
have started giving you the space and freedom to work according to your will. Whenever we approached channels, since the past six years I'm talking about, with a not so mainstream and not ideally a time-tested trendy idea, like say a Sarabhai versus Sarabhai, a Khichdi, a Baba Who Are Baby, or an Ek Packet Umeer, which was certainly a far cry from existing popular programming, we were given the green signal, creative freedom, and great support by the channels. Therefore, I insist that we should avoid being cynical and say that channels do not want to attempt new stuff. It is up to the writer and only the writer to come up with newer ideas which have a progressive edge and the potential to be packaged in an attractive way. If genuinely interesting content is packaged in a market and audience friendly form, then the chances of the content being received well are very, very high. Let us not underestimate the audience and dismiss them as people with a frivolous sensibility it has the ability to distinguish between good and bad content. Yes, of course, sometimes mediocre content too succeeds merely on the strength of a glamorous and enticing presentation. But then is that not the way a lot of other forms of entertainment succeeds also? You know, why blame television alone? You know? Let us understand that the time of isolated television writing is over and it is imperative to accommodate scientific market research and ego-free give and take of ideas and an open-minded glance at the audience expectations while writing a television show because whether we like it or not, it's a rat race and the programs that enter the race cost a huge lot of money, a decent part of which thankfully goes to the writer also. This I will emphasize because I have had a few experiences writing cinema where I've never received any money. But television really pays the writer and I will emphasize this point. Therefore, a writer has to strive harder to make his or her show become not just highly engrossing, but reasonably cost-effective too, especially in the recent times, where it's going to be cut-throat competition. I urge new writers and some others who have quit television writing due to a supposed attack on their self-respect to come and create a wave of fresh contemporary TV programming, because time has just begun to ripen. Seriously, it has just begun to ripen. We need more and more writers to come back to television or enter television, you know, and start something new because it's going to be received well. Because if you think that TV writing is crass and mediocre, then it's all the more necessary that you come and improve it. <laughs> Sitting with an over-romanticized idea of great filmmaking and calling television an idiot box will not help. Your actions just might. But if you still insist that even a mere suggestion is trespassing on your creative territory, then I would say avoid TV. Write a novel instead and pray that somebody buys it and reads it. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. I think Atashi said it very rightly. Now the time has come for the writer. It was not there before. Now I request Mr. Venus Ranganathan to put his paper. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my topic for today's discussion is my observation on the trend in television writing in the last eight to nine years. Before that, I would like just to counter certain things that Atish said. This is my observation completely. I may be wrong. But there is this myth in this industry that the stage is the actor's medium. The film is the director's medium. And the television is the writer's medium. In the last seven to eight years, and especially in the last two to three years, the amount of importance, as Atish was pointing out, to the glamorous sets, to the amount of money that has been spent on putting up sets, the amount of money that has been gone into costume designing, jewelry designing, it has become more their medium than a writer's medium. There was never a premium given to good writing in the television industry. Even today, if you look across, there are very few producers. Hats off is one of them because Atish himself is a writer. But there are very few producers who look out for good writers. What is happening? Market mein aaj hit hai, usko 
अब मार्केट में जो हिट है वो अच्छा लिख रहा है ये कोई नहीं देखता दिस इज द रियालिटी वॉट इज हैपन इन टेलीविजन इन द लास्ट सेवन टू एट ईयर्स इज दैट देर इज नो इंपॉर्टेंस गिवन टू द क्राफ्ट ऑफ टेलीविजन राइटिंग देर इज अ क्राफ्ट इन्वॉल्व देर इज अ मेथड टू राइटिंग टेलीविजन विच हेज नॉट बीन फॉलोड एंड द रीजन वाई इट हेज नॉट बीन फॉलोड एट टू नाइन ईयर्स बैक वी हैड थ्री टू फोर चैनल्स टूडे देर आर ट्वेल्व चैनल्स Every channel has seven to eight shows every day, so in a in 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 a week you are supposed to churn out close to hundred episodes. To write hundred episodes, you need three hundred writers. So where do you get three hundred writers? Anybody and everybody has become a writer. Unfortunately, you can actually count in television the number of people who are considered good writers. I know of instances where production managers have become writers. i know of instances where assistant cameramen have become writers and today because cameramen have started getting more money they've gone back to being cameramen <laughs> it's a fact a cameraman in a good cameraman in television today gets close to 50000 rupees an episode how much does a good television writer get not even half of it yes as atish says even i wrote films i know got paid i've come back to television television does pay you much more it does but in comparison in comparison the writer is not paid and why is he not paid because we as writers ourselves have had a callous attitude towards writing television we have become like the barbers in tirupati temple ki wo aapko bulata hai bolta hai ha sab mundan karana baitho us tarah nikala ek shot mara dusre ko pakda bola baitho uska kar diya hum bhi jaake teen char shows pakad lete hain because we need the money we are not concentrating on writing television the way it should be written because there is an insecurity in us we want to earn <coughs> we want to not let go of the channels we want to be in the good book of the channels so if the channel calls you how can you say no to the channel so where are we we forget writing the way it is it should be written we are trying to capture concepts programs and see to it that we are happy a writer in television today feels happy if he is writing 3 to 4 shows if he is writing one show he feels extremely insecure and this according to me is the reason why till the last 7 to 8 years the standard of writing has gone down so very quickly to come to what i mean by the falling standard standards of television in the last 8 to 9 years most soaps are written with a single main protagonist and even after a soap is say 100 episodes down the track the story structure and the events of the uh, soap is centered only around the main protagonist so eventually what happens the story runs dry of substance and the help of film tracks of indian and hollywood films are taken to hota kya hai ki 3 4 mahine ke baad jab kahani atak jati hai aapko pata nahi kya karna hai to bhai market mein kya chal raha hai jaane to hit ho gaya chalo jaane to ka track dalo और अभी दोस्ताना हिट हो गया तो चलो वो डाल दो सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग बिकॉज ऑफ दिस एंड विच इज वाई इन द लास्ट टू टू थ्री ईयर्स वी वैव नोटिस दैट शोज दैट स्टार्ट ऑफ डोंट रन लाइक अर्लियर टाइम्स फॉर अ ईयर और टू ईयर्स दे आर शटिंग डाउन इन थ्री टू फोर मंथ्स वाई बिकॉज इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो दैट वेन यू आर राइटिंग अ सोप देर इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट एंड देर इज एन आइडिया बिहाइंड इट it is that idea it is that concept which is publicized in holdings and today the amount of money that is uh, pumped into publicizing a soap is on par with the feature film so your viewer as atish rightly put is intelligent he is watching your show because of all of that publicity now if that concept if that idea has attracted him he is going to watch it why does the show after 3 months fall in its trps because you've gone away from what the concept is you've gone away from what the thought of the original thought was why because they are single protagonist stories so does that mean that single protagonist stories don't work they do work how do you make them work soap operas traditionally and will always be multi layered multi track stories so you may start a soap with one single protagonist because it is through that protagonist that the idea the thought behind the show starts off with 
but you need to carry multiple tracks. If I have to give you an example, if you look at a show like 24, which is a cult action thriller, 24 is a one-hour thriller which has multiple tracks running throughout. You don't have Kiefer Sutherland from frame one till frame end. There are constantly five or six tracks working. And that is how traditionally soaps used to be written. It used to be written. In the last seven to eight years, this has gone. This whole concept of writing multiple track stories have ceased. What does multiple track stories do to writing? One, it gives density to your script. Two, and the most important thing, it gives the feeling to the viewer that he's watching a lot. It gives the feeling to the viewer that there is space. The moment a story becomes single protagonist story, it runs thin, it runs dry, and there ends your story. In three months time, your TRPs fall, then you get into all these things about picking up DVDs, picking up stories from nowhere, and what happens, and the most important thing in television is that your viewer is connecting with the character. Television being an intimate medium, it is a very relatable character that becomes popular. Now, because three months down the line, you have run short of your idea, and you don't know what to do with it, because you've, 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 you've uh, put all your energies into uh, the single protagonist storyline, the moment you pick up a film uh, track, or you pick up a book track, or whatever track you pick up, your character changes according to that. So the character whom the viewer was identifying till three months has a disconnect. The viewer is not able to connect to that character because what have you done is you have taken that character from where you've started and you've pushed him into a film script. You've pushed him into some other script. This I have seen and I myself have experienced this in a couple of shows that I have written from which I have walked off because I couldn't write this. But this is a trend you'll see in most soaps today. Most soaps, the moment you see the rating is falling, if you're watching it carefully, you will notice that then all sorts of artificial storylines start coming into it. And the reason for that is that most writers in television today are not aware or not equipped or have never even tried to tell a multi-track, multi-layered story. But that is one thing which is missing completely in the last seven to eight years. Yes, there are multiple tracks. There are other characters. Because most soaps today are joint family soaps, so obviously a joint family has 15 to 20 characters. But what happens is because it's a single protagonist story, all energies have gone in that single protagonist. So after three months, when the single protagonist story is over and you're struggling with the DVD or whatever you've got to take the story forward, that is when you wake up and say, oh, I have these characters. And then those tracks start. The problem is that multiple tracks should always mix with the main story. Now that doesn't happen. What happens in today's television, mostly, is that parallel tracks run. Parallel tracks run without any connectivity with the main story, the main concept, or the main character. And then suddenly, one fine day, the channel will get up and say, the TRPs are following, because last week, this rating went down, because this track was running, so you end the track. So what happens? You are forced as a writer to end the track. The fault is not the channels. The fault is you as a writer. The fault is that you should have started these multiple tracks from the time the story started. That is a big problem which I have noticed in the last 78 years in television. The other thing that has started happening in television is that in the last six to seven years, we've been having what is popularly called regressive soaps. Now, if regressive soaps is the demand in the market and you are going to write it, then you have to face it. Either you write it or you don't. But if you're writing it, it doesn't mean that if every other regressive soap is sounding or looking similar, you have to create scenes which look similar. Most soaps that I have noticed in the last 70 years, eight years, have the same kind of sequences happening. And the biggest problem is that the moment there is a festival happening, then God help you. All 100 episodes in all those 12 channels will have a Diwali. And the Diwali will be shot in the same way. The Holi will be shot in the same way. The Karwa Chauth will happen the same way. And Karwa Chauth is, by God, the best sequence. <laughs> Invariably, in every soap, there is the heroine who is waiting with that thing in her hand, looking at the chan. And the husband is obviously not going to come. And he is caught up somewhere. And she is fainting. She is dying and whatever. This has been repeated every year, last eight years, 
over episodes, who is to be blamed? I think the writer has to be blamed. We have to blame ourselves. We can't put the blame, as Atish rightly put, on the channel and say it's the channel who's saying. The channel might say, Karva Chodha hai, Karva Chodha karo. But for that, you have to, you have to think of ways by changing a Karva Chodha sequence. You have to think of changing the Karva Chodha sequence. You have to think of changing how a Diwali can be played. You can think of playing Holi differently, but that is not done. The other thing that I've noticed is that, you know, plot lines, sequences, have been added for effect, which Atish had pointed out. They have no connection to what the main plot is. Because suddenly you feel your TRPs are dipping, suddenly you feel there's some market research which throws up and says, Bhai, pichle hafte ke episode mein ye ye ho gaya tha, to aapne kuch aur lake usme dal diya. Without thinking, without even bothering to see ke what you're bringing in, how much damage it is going to do ahead, or what damage it is going to do with all that you've established in the last three to four months. The other thing is, there is no in-depth thought or research that goes into writing television. Television is a medium, and television writing especially, where you can explore a myriad things, much more than a film can. A film is a two-hour duration, and there's only that much you can explore. Character exposition can be done far more detailed and in a better way in television. It doesn't happen here. I'll give you an example. If you're talking about a couple who've been married for the past 10 years and the couple doesn't have a kid, then the typical scenario kya hota hai? Ki it's the wife who's blamed, uspe sara atyachar hota hai, blah, blah, blah. This is all which we've all seen. Now, supposing they think about taking up adoption, then what happens? Well, typically, in all soaps, you'll see when the question of adoption comes, Immediately, there is a response from the father-in-law, there is a response from the mother-in-law, there is a response from the devar, the devrani, jet, jethani, everybody. And there is a lot of drama. What is that drama? That that heroine is crying. Oh, maa banna chati aur das log hain jo keh rahe ke bhai ye. So, writer kya bolte hai, sir, mein obstacle kiya na? Dekho, father-in-law ne aisa bol diya, mother-in-law ne vaisa bol diya. How many people have tried to go and find out what is the procedure of adoption? How many people have tried to find out that if, if you actually go to see what is the procedure of adoption, it is far more dramatic than any father-in-law, mother-in-law, jet, jetani, devar, devrani can do. But this kind of research is not done. And there's no point blaming the channel. If you go and tell the channel, look, this is what I found out and this is how dramatic it is and this is what I can do, the channel will agree. So this is the thing that is uh, also missing in television today. I'll just run through two more points. The most important thing in television, and which is the backbone of all writing, is the teleplay. And today, there is no semblance of a teleplay. Most writers don't know what it is to write a teleplay. They're filling pages and pages. You have dialogue. You have dialogue, and you have a story document. There is no teleplay happening. As Atish was saying, there's a lot of sound happening. Why is the sound happening? Because there is no treatment written. How many teleplays, if any one of you have tried to go and read any teleplay that is available, can you see any narrative? Can you see any descriptions? Can you see any mood <coughs> settings? Can you see how a scene is opening? There's no time, no energy devoted to this. So what happens? The director doesn't know how to shoot the scene because there's no opening written, there is no description given. There's dialogue written there. So channel ka EP phone karega ya CD phone karega bolega bhaiya dekho scene aisa na isko aisa karo camera aise aise ghuma lo drama aa jayega to director bhi apna kamal dikha de because usko dikhana hai ki main drama leke aa raha hu to wo camera ghuma raha hai background music wala apna background de raha hai ki drama lao no there is drama but it is not written because there is a structure to it and that structure most people don't know so there is no teleplay in television today you ask any director, any good director, you ask any creative head in a channel, and this is what they will tell you, that you don't find teleplays. This is a major problem in the last eight to nine years. And finally, most soaps are written without any work given to development of the concept. There is, a, there is an idea which germinates in the writer's mind, and then that idea has to develop into a full-fledged story with a lot of plot points. Television writing is far more difficult than film writing. 
Mind you, I'm not trying to belittle film writing. It has its own complexities. What I mean by that is that you see in a film, there is a beginning, middle, and an end. In television, there is a beginning. There is no end. <laughs> it's damn difficult. It is damn difficult. A, a film writer can afford to take six months to write a film. Some people take six years, as uh, Anjuma was saying that, uh, Rakesh Mehra was saying, live with your film. In television, we can't live with it, man. We have to deliver every day. So where is the work being done to develop the concept into a full-fledged Bible, a document? Nobody does it. There is no work done in plotting a story, milestoning it, writing it week-wise, work out reaching points, and see to it that your plot from one reaching point reaches to this next reaching point. It is not done. Most production houses you go today, before a daily soap starts, shooting shuru kyun hua? Set ka pending ho Costume barabar baitha nahi hai. Actor ka date nahi hai. Aur script? Che script tayar hai sir. Believe me, at an average, on an average, in television today, not more than six to 10 episodes are ready for shoot. That's the scary part. And this is why after three months you run out of stories. This is why then you run to DVDs. This is why we do all those artificial things into the story because the writer is not spending enough time in developing the concept. And I, I, I would like to reiterate here that this is not the fault of the channel. There, are, there might be probably very few instances where a show has to come on air within a month or two months. But if a writer knows his craft, if a writer knows what it is to milestone, if a writer knows what it is to take it forward, he can sit and do it even if the channel doesn't tell him to do it. But because most of us in television unfortunately don't know it, we falter here. What is the way forward? I personally feel that there's a lot of work, reading, and research that happens in films. People take writing films very seriously. <clears throat> you know, it's considered something great to write films. You call yourself a film writer. It's somewhere considered not cool to be a TV writer. Now, because of this, what is happening is that the TV writer is not taking his craft seriously. Everybody out here knows Fred Sidfield, right? Editing students will know about Carol Rice. How many people know about Madeleine DiMaggio? Madeleine DiMaggio to television writing is what Fred Sidfield is to feature film writing. There might be probably five people in this audience who might have read Madeleine DiMaggio. So there's no, there is no attempt by this television writer to understand his craft. There is no attempt to read. There is no attempt to do any research. If this is done, I'm quite confident that this new trend which Atish was talking about, which I'm also experiencing now, that people are asking for better concepts, different stories, they will be written better. All writing, there is a structure to it, there is a math involved in it. And if you learn, you read, I personally feel, then we'll have better scripts here. Thank you. Vinod described the plight of a TV writer. Yes, there's plenty. I'll mention one or two things. Episode dekha, isme to eki crane shot hai. Dusra ek episode dekha, bola isme aisa karte hai, isko goli maar dete hai. Bhai kyon? Kahe ko, baad mein dekhe. Second, I don't agree with Atish ji and we know both. Yes, seven years back, Atish, like Atish, we, I was also happy. What he has suffered, what he has gone, what he has de described is right. Don't leave, don't come to this channel, TV, for the sake of money. Don't leave films for the sake of money. Nobody has stopped any payment of Anjum for, this, for the films that he has made. I have been not paid for a film that I made that is, turns into lakhs. Now, please, writers, wake and do something. <laughs> Mr. Vinod. Hello. Television mein afternoon ka slot, low TRP slot mana jata hai. Udar dekh ke aisa hi lag raha hai.
तो मुझे वर्किंग कंडीशंस पे बोलने का बात करने का आदेश दिया गया है ये एक ऐसा टॉपिक है जिसमें कि मुझे यकीन है कि यहाँ जितने भी टेलीविजन राइटर्स बैठे हुए हैं वो घंटों बोल सकते हैं ढेर सारे सवाल ढेर सारी कंप्लेंट्स और आई एम सॉरी टू से ढेर सारी गालियाँ अंदर भरी हुई हैं लेकिन टाइम की बंदिश है इसलिए प्रिसाइजली थोड़ी थोड़ी बातें मैं करना चाहूँगा यहाँ पर वर्किंग कंडीशंस यस दूरदर्शन के बाद से लेकर आज तक में वर्किंग कंडीशंस चेंज हुई हैं दूरदर्शन के वक्त एक चैनल था लिमिटेड प्रोग्राम्स थे थोड़ा काम था थोड़े लोगों को काम मिलता था थोड़ा पैसा था मुझे नहीं लगता कि उस वक्त कोई भी टेलीविजन राइटिंग को अपना करियर बनाने के बारे में सोचता भी होगा लेकिन आज सोचते हैं बहुत सारे नए लड़के लड़कियां मेरे पास आते हैं जो कि बिल्कुल सीरियसली टेलीविजन राइटिंग को करियर बनाने का डिसीजन लेकर आए हुए होते हैं आज ज़्यादा चैनल है ज़्यादा काम है ज़्यादा अपॉर्चुनिटी है ज़्यादा पैसा है लेकिन उतना भी नहीं एक गलत फहमी मैं आप सबके दूर करना चाहूँगा यहाँ पर बहुत सारे लोग जो टेलीविजन से थोड़ा सा दूर हैं उनको ये लगता है कि इनकी थाली में घी थोड़ा सा नहीं बहुत ज़्यादा है ये लोग बहुत घटिया और बहुत खराब लिख के बहुत ज़्यादा पैसा कमा रहे हैं बिल्कुल नहीं ऐसा बिल्कुल भी नहीं है ये बिल्कुल झूठ है गलत है और लाल कृष्ण अडवाणी के शब्दों में अगर मैं कहूँ तो छलावा है प्रवंचना है ये सही है कि हमें जो पैसा कमिट किया जाता है वो बहुत होता है कैलकुलेट कीजिए कि महीने के इतने एपिसोड इतना पैसा लगता लाइफ बन गई लेकिन जनाब वो पैसा मिलता किधर है एपिसोड तो उतने ही बनते हैं लेकिन चेक उसके आधे भी नहीं बनते अगर उसका आधा पैसा भी आपको बाय चांस मिल जाए तो दूधो नहाए पुतो फलों की तरह दारू नहाओ और मुर्गा फलो और ये सिर्फ न्यू कमर्स की बात नहीं है बाकी का आधा पैसा आप निकलवाते निकलवाते आपके जूतों के साथ में टांगे भी घिस जाएंगे दोस्त देखेगा तो बोलेगा हाइट थोड़ी कम दिख रही है सिर्फ नए लोगों की बात नहीं है लेक जी बैठे हुए हैं लेक जी का पैसा भी प्रोड्यूसर खा गए सही बोल रहा हूँ लेक जी <laughs> खैर थोड़ा बहुत पैसा तो मिलता है लेकिन उसके उससे ज्यादा हमें स्ट्रेस मिलता है बीवी बहुत दिन से गाली बकरी होती है कि आपके पास हमारे लिए वक्त नहीं है एक शाम आप सारा काम जल्दी ख़त्म करते हैं बड़े रोमांटिक मूड में घर आते हैं कि आज लेट नाइट डिनर करके लॉन्ग ड्राइव पे जाएंगे किसी होटल में जाते हैं स्टार्टर भी स्टार्ट नहीं होते हैं कि एक फ़ोन आता है असिस्टेंट डायरेक्टर वो पूछता है कि सर ये जो आपने एक सीन लिखा है जिसमें भैरव बाबा का मंदिर है इसमें भैरव बाबा की मूर्ति कैसी होगी उनकी मतलब मूँछ होगी कि नहीं होगी या आँखें बड़ी होंगी या मूर्ति लगी ऊपर मुकुट होगा कि नहीं होगा सर या आर्ट डायरेक्टर पूछ रहे हैं आप आसपास देखते हो कि यार इस क्राउड में भैरव बाबा की बात करना थोड़ा डाउन मार्केट लगेगा <laughs> तो बाहर निकल जाते हैं बाहर खड़े होके आर्ट डायरेक्टर को समझाते हैं देखो भाई ऐसा 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 है ऐसा 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 है उसकी समझ नहीं आता नॉर्मली नॉर्थ इंडिया का नहीं होता है <laughs> तो वो उधर से बोलता है कि सर एक काम करें इसको काली मंदिर बना दें क्या वो रेडी है आप बोल दे भाई ये स्टोरी की डिमांड है इसके पहले भी रेफरेंस इसके बाद भी रेफरेंस है बहुत सारे इसमें मामला हैं आप प्लीज तो बहुत देर में जैसे तैसे आप उसको समझा के जब पलटते हो तो पीछे बीवी खड़ी हुई है बोलती डिनर हो गया घर चलो और अगर आप डायलॉग राइटर हो तो आपकी तो और खेर नहीं है मतलब आपसे गरीब आदमी कोई नहीं रात को दो बजे बीवी जगाती है फोन पकड़ाती है घूरती है मुंह पलटा के सो जाती है शेड्यूलर का फोन है कि सर कल सुबह जो तुलसी के सीन थे वो परसों शिफ्ट कर दिए हैं और परसों जो सलोनी और पार्वती के सीन थे वो कल शिफ्ट कर दिए हैं क्योंकि तुलसी की फ्लाइट कैंसिल हो गई वो आ नहीं पा रही है तो अब जो परसों वाले सीन है वो सुबह तक लिख के चाहिए आप बोलते दिमाग खराब है बारह सीन है सुबह तक रात को दो बजे सुबह तक लिख के दे दो गिड़गिड़ाता है सर नौकरी का सवाल है सर उसके गिड़गिड़ाने में आप थोड़ा सा 
निकल जाते हैं दो सीन लिख के और भिजवाते हैं कि बाकी तो शूटिंग शुरू कर बाकी एक एक दो दो करके मैं भेजता रहूँ शूटिंग शुरू होती है एक एक दो दो सीन जाते हैं शूटिंग चलती रहती है और आप क्वालिटी की बात करते हैं आप कहते हैं कि टीवी पे हम सब स्टैंडर्ड और घटिया लिख रहे हैं वही किसी पीटी बातें वही किसी पीटे थॉट्स वही के वही ट्रे, ट्रैक्स हम बार बार रिपीट करते हैं वही हे भोलेनाथ मेरे सुहाग को बचा लो एक औरत जब माँ होती तो ममता बरसाती है चंडी का रूप धरती है तो सो एन सो एन सो एन सो यस हम लिखते हैं बार बार लिखते हैं बहुत कम लोग फॉर्चुनेट होते हैं आतिश जी की तरह विनोद जी की तरह ये इंडिविजुअल सवाल नहीं है ये एक कलेक्टिव सवाल है एवरेज नहीं कहा टीआरपी तो एवरेज से निकलती है अगर मैं कहूं कि मुझे बालिका वधु में आ, सवाल नहीं किया जाता है फीडबैक नहीं आता मेरी मर्जी का काम होता है तो वो इस सवाल का जवाब नहीं होगा एक आम राइटर की क्या पोजिशन है आपको उससे एवरेज निकालना पड़ेगा एक आम राइटर की पोजिशन देखिए एक आम राइटर कैसी हालत में राइटिंग कर रहा है टेलीविजन में उसको देखना पड़ेगा आपको आपकी तकदीर अच्छी है कि आपको फोर्स नहीं किया गया आपको अच्छी राइटिंग करने के लिए मिल गई लेकिन बाकी को नहीं मिली किसी भी राइटिंग करते हैं लेकिन मैं ये मानने के लिए बिल्कुल तैयार नहीं हूं कि टेलीविजन पर अच्छे राइटर नहीं है टेलीविजन पर अच्छे राइटर है अच्छे थॉट है लेकिन आप लिखने कहा देते हैं आप दो है एक बड़ा आप एक छोटा आप बड़ा आप है चैनल जो माय बाप वहां पर एक मास कम्युनिकेशन या एमबीए पास आउट बैठी हुई रहती है वो आपको स्क्रिप्ट लिखना सिखाती है वो बोलती सर इट्स नॉट वर्किंग फॉर मी Who the hell you are? <laughs> Then what works for you? तो सर वो जो के थ्री जी में शाहरुख एंड ए बी का जो सीन था एंड डी डी एल जे में जो सेम सीन था आप पहले समझने की कोशिश करते हुए के थ्री जी और डी डी एल जे क्या है के एन के मतलब ढेर सारे ऐसे एग्जाम्पल आपके सामने आते जाते हैं और बताया जाता है कि इस तरह से आप लिखिए ये लिखिए स्क्रीन प्ले बल्कि कभी कभी तो डायलॉग भी बता दिए जाते हैं कि यहां पर ये डायलॉग डालिए और इसके बाद में रही सही कह सर हमारे प्रोडक्शन हाउस वो पूरी कर देते हैं कि बस सारे एक्टर्स न्यू ईयर की छुट्टी के लिए बाहर जा रहे हैं 20 तारीख तक इतने एपिसोड चाहिए क्या ये लोकेशन मंदिर की लोकेशन बुक हुई है दो तीन सीन और लिख दो यार मंदिर की क्या लिख दो तो प्रोडक्शन इंचार्ज बोलते कुछ भी लिख दो <laughs> मतलब कुछ भी क्या तो बताता है कि सर एक खुशी का सीन लिखो एक गम का <laughs> तो खुशी का ही है कि हीरोइन जाके किसी बात पे भगवान को धन्यवाद अदा कर रही है और दुख का ये कि किसी बात पे जाके प्लीट कर रही है रो रही है वगैरह वगैरह तो आगे जब भी कोई भी ट्रेक आएगा अकॉर्डिंगली सीन्स में डायलॉग डब करके चिपका दूंगा <laughs> ये हालत है टेलीविजन की ये हालत है राइटिंग की उसके पास में पेमेंट छ महीना पहले राइटर लिखना चालू करता है और सबसे आखिर में सबसे आखिर में इसलिए बोल रहा हूं कि एडिटर के साथ पेमेंट मिलता है एक्टर को उसके पहले मिल चुका होता है और उसके बाद भी पूरा पेमेंट आपको कभी नहीं मिलता है मांगने जाइए कहते हैं कि चैनल से नहीं आया अरे भाई लिखवाना शुरू किया था तो चैनल से मिला था उसके बाद लिखवाता लेकिन हम हमारा दिमाग इन्वेस्ट करेंगे हम हमारा मेहनत इन्वेस्ट करेंगे वो पैसा इन्वेस्ट नहीं करेगा चैनल से आएगा तभी देगा बल्कि वो भी पहले घुमा लेगा दो चार सीरियल में उसके बाद देगा आतीश जी <laughs> प्रोड्यूसर्स के साइड से बोल रहा हूं एनी तो आपकी फ्रीडम क्रिएटिव फ्रीडम रूइन हो रही है आपका क्रेडिट छीना जा रहा है आपका पैसा छीना जा रहा है आपकी सेल्फ रिस्पेक्ट के साथ में खिलवाड़ हो रहा है उसके बाद भी आप चुप हैं
इस चुप की सबसे बड़ी वजह है सबके माथे पे 24 घंटे लटकती हुई टर्मिनेशन की तलवार टेलीविजन में कोई भी चैनल कोई भी प्रोड्यूसर किसी भी राइटर को कभी भी किसी भी वक्त बिना किसी वेले ड्रीजर के टर्मिनेट कर सकता है चाहे फिर आप प्रेमचंद हो या शरद चंद हो कोई रीजन नहीं आपको निकाल दिया जाएगा इसलिए इनसिक्योरिटी रहती आप एक्सप्लॉयट होते रहते हैं लेकिन कब तक चुप रहेंगे अभी दो तीन दिन पहले मैं पार्लियामेंट का सेशन सुन रहा था उसमें कोई कोट कर रहा था कि चुप रहने से भी कातिल की मदद होती है तो बोलना तो पड़ेगा नहीं बोलेंगे तो कैसे काम चलेगा और हम ही को बोलना पड़ेगा किस तरह से बोलना पड़ेगा वो वर्कआउट किया जा सकता है हम सबको एक रूप के नीचे आना पड़ेगा एक मंच के नीचे आना पड़ेगा अपने राइट समझना पड़ेंगे कैसे लेना है किन से लेना है ये तो पता है लेकिन कैसे लेना है क्या क्या लेना है ये समझना पड़ेगा राइट right, जो मंच है वो ये है राइटर्स एसोसिएशन है हमको प्रोटेक्शन मांगना है हमारे एसोसिएशन के साथ में खड़े होकर हमको प्रोटेक्शन मांगना है अपना पैसा मांगना है अपनी क्रेडिट मांगना है अपना जितना ड्यू है मांगना है उसके लिए हमको खड़ा होना पड़ेगा इंश्योर करना पड़ेगा कि हम प्रोड्यूसर्स के दबाव में नहीं आएंगे हम चैनल्स के दबाव में नहीं आएंगे बोल देंगे देखिए मैडम आप सजेशन दीजिए डिक्टेट मत कीजिए चुपचाप रहने से बिल्कुल काम नहीं चलने वाला है आपको कलेक्टिव होना ही पड़ेगा सिर्फ एसोसिएशन भी आगे बढ़ के कुछ नहीं कर पाएगा जब तक कि पीछे से आप लोगों का सपोर्ट नहीं होगा सारे राइटर्स का सपोर्ट चाहिए दो चार लोगों से हो भी नहीं सकता ये कुछ जो इस दिशा में एसोसिएशन ने शुरुआत की है एक डॉक्यूमेंट तैयार करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं एक बेसिक अग्रीमेंट तैयार करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं एफ ने एक डॉक्यूमेंट रफ डॉक्यूमेंट तैयार भी किया है जिसमें टेलीविजन के कुछ सीनियर राइटर्स को बुला के उसकी डिस्कशन हुए मीटिंग्स हुई हैं कुछ नाम से नाम है मेरे पास में जो लोग आए भी थे जयेश पाटिल विनोद रंगनाथ आनंद वर्धन अनिरुद्ध पाठक साकेत चौधरी इम्तियाज हुसैन एफ डब्ल्यू चेयरमैन जल्ली शेरवानी रघुवीर शेखावत इला बेदी दत्ता मृणाल झा कुमार गौतम राजेश जोशी पूर्णेंदु शेखर ये सारे लोग आए भी डिस्कशन भी हुआ और एक डॉक्यूमेंट रफ डॉक्यूमेंट तैयार किया गया है अभी तक फाइनल स्टेज पर नहीं पहुंचा लेकिन डिस्कशन जारी है और जैसा कि अंजुम जी ने बोला है कि कम से कम ऐसे ये सब्जेक्ट ऐसा है कि इस पर कम से कम एक दिन की वर्कशॉप की कॉन्फ्रेंस वर, कम वर्कशॉप की ज़रूरत है जिस पर बैठ के हम डिस्कशन करें मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा जल शेरवानी साहब से कि ये वक्त हमें दें और मेरे ख्याल से जितनी अभी यहाँ अटेंडेंस है इससे ज़्यादा अटेंडेंस होगी और टी इससे ज़्यादा होगी थैंक यू वेरी मच अच्छी सी प्रॉब्लम बताई इनने ये वर्किंग प्रॉब्लम है अर्षद जी कुछ आप कहना चाहेंगे हेलो एवरीवन वन आई एम श्योर दुबे जी के स्पीच के बाद आफ्टरनून रेटिंग्स टी आर बढ़ गई होगी डेफिनेटली और uh, मैं एक्चुअली कुछ और कहना चाहता था लेकिन अब uh, मैं बिकॉज टाइम कम है मैं बस एक अपना पर्सनल एक बात कहूँगा आप सबसे कि आई हैव बेसिकली आई कम फ्रॉम अनदर करियर मैं एक मार्केटिंग करियर में था छोटे छोटे बाल थे सूट पहनता था पूरे दिन हफ्ते में छः दिन और मैं खुश नहीं था आई वॉज एन हैप्पी विथ माई जॉब एंड राइटिंग वॉज वॉट आई वॉन्टेड टू डू सो द रीजन आई टुक दैट रिस्क द जम्प वॉज बिकॉज ऑफ द पैशन द फन ऑफ राइटिंग एंड ऑफकोर्स द पावर एंड जब से मैं राइटर बना हूँ इट्स नॉट यू नो यू सीन अ लॉट ऑफ अदर राइटर्स जहाँ पर पैशन नहीं है फन नहीं है यू सी पीपल राइटर्स टेलीविजन इंडस्ट्री में चेहरे उतरे हुए हैं प्रेशर्स फ्रॉम चैनल प्रेशर्स विच आई थिंक विनोद हैज टच अपॉन आतिश टच अपॉन जहाँ राइटर जा रहा है चैनल मीटिंग को और साथ में दो पेपर हैं बस और पूछते हैं यार क्या है तुम्हारा यू हैव अरेशन फॉर एपिसोड ई सेज येस वाई जस्ट टू पेपर्स हाँ इतना तो है बाकी तो बता ही देंगे मुझे so basically uh, i have been in lots of situations too but at no point if even if today if you give me an option to ever go back to my earlier earlier career despite all the hardships i must have gone through uh, or whatever which we all do i would never it's my uh, recurring nightmare jahan main suit pehen ke office mein baitha hu chote chote baal and i wake up in the middle of the night no so the point i'm trying to make is that we have chosen this profession ki doctor ne humse nahi kaha ki writer bano uh, and we are very proud of it and 
we will face hardships. I'm being a little positive over here, maybe, I don't know, but it, it's like in any other career, I'm sure directors will have their grievances, producers will have their grievances, channels will have their grievances. We have, this is our grievance, obviously, as writers, and that's what we are concerned about. Uh, but at no point should we forget one thing that being a writer, it, it's a very unique thing, which uh, it's, it's one field, one, one uh, job profile where you get to work in isolation. I mean, uh, you really do not, in that sense, depend on anybody. Because the writer creates. You can create from a, we create from a blank piece of paper. As against to, uh, you know, other, uh, be it an actor, an actor needs people to perform and a, a director needs his unit. So you will have situations where the channel is going to bog you down, payments are not coming, uh, episode ki rating gum ja rahi hai. Bilkul wo to hota rahega. But what really matters is that do not lose that passion when you are with yourself. Because you're very lucky as, as a writer to be able to sit rubaru with your passion and write. A writer can have an excuse of going off to the Himalayas and writing. I don't think anybody else can do that. I mean, not that we'll do that, but still. Uh, so when you're alone with your craft, with your script, uh, which is what I do, uh, it, it works for me. That's when I just shut my mind out. I, I forget the channel people, I forget all those EPs who are sitting and saying, you know what, I don't think terrorist network should be in English, it shouldn't be in Hindi. So, uh, you know, um, because nobody understands, uh, you know, they, they, the kind of suggestions that come, you have to learn to take it lightly after a point. Stop letting it affect your work. It might, you know, you will get worked, you need a lot of patience that you have to build in, but when you're sitting and writing, you need to just, uh, shut all that out and write for yourself. Because the other factors at the end may may not be in your hand. You know, the TRP, you can't see the Mossy in the mirror, you can't the episode in the episode. Similarly, how the channel is going to react to it, you will not know. How the production house is going to react to it. I mean, they are doing their jobs. That's in a way not in your control. What is in your control is the script before you. So please focus on that. and write for yourself and there is a saying uh, which is basically uh, you know dance like no one is watching so i sometimes follow that write like no one is reading because when you do that then you you know all those pressures go away and you just end up writing from your own heart and experience from your own life it's not that you can't put something of your own inside it of course you can so forget all those external things put your own heart into it write it out completely and believe me if you if there's a part of you in that script when you take it to the channel when you take it to the producer when you take it to whoever you will sell it with much more conviction when they will protest against it you will defend it with more conviction and believe me they will also be convinced because they will feel your conviction and that conviction will go across into the episode or the film and finally at some point it is going to touch into an audience too. So I think that's all I have to say and uh, all the best. Thank you. एक साहब हैं जो बहुत रिक्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं कि वो भी पांच मिनट के लिए बोलना चाहते हैं जो नीचे नाम तो बता रहे लेकिन नाम गायब हो गया जो बेनाम साहब हैं आ जाएं कमार कौन कमार कौन Thank you Lekji. Well to take up the topic from where Rajesh ji left, TV is which medium? It's a writer's medium or a channel medium? TV is no more a writer's medium. TV has become channel's medium. They tell you what to write, how to write, in fact, how to execute. Let me quote you an incident. I asked one of my sensible programming head in one of the television channels, why are we making our protagonist typical? That spoils the character, he replied. Well, I'm incorporating changes as per the feedback from the marketing team. They have a survey to back up and I'm liable to listen to them. So you see, TV programming is run by a marketing wing of a television channel vis-a-vis -vis market forces or in the other world, economical mechanism. As the market forces keep on gyrating daily like our Sensex, so does the storyline of our television serials. So where's the storyline? If it doesn't have a body structure, it becomes spineless ad of incidents, which never ever erects to leave an everlasting impact, as Vinod, uh, Vinod said earlier, in the mind of the people, as were the serial of yesteryears. The TV in DD days, however, were monopolized in terms of programming, but they had an objective. The basic idea was to showcase the culture, values, educate, and entertain people. As I remember in the other session where they were saying, uh, how is the Indian script unique? 
the way India is unique, the way India is diverse in terms of its presentation, its geographical contours, so is the Indian script unique. In the DD days, the idea was to keep cultural heritage of India alive. Post liberalization, the more markets have opened, the more greed has seeped in, and the modern responsibility has almost evaded. The head of operation of a TRP generating TV channel told me candidly, Bye, our audience is not the housewives, but the buys and the maids who work in the house. They are happy seeing chiding fights in between ladies on the screen as that shoots their ego. They don't think that they are the only one fighting in their chawl. Their attitude is, Rajesh ji has written this show, their attitude is, Badi badi memesar log aisa karta hai, tum dekhta nahi hai kya? O saat fere mein dekha nahi? Kaise usko kaali kaali kaya ke usko itna satate hai? So later, even I realized that my female contemporaries work so hard to shape up their future, as in the today's generation. They have no time to watch television. They have no time to watch singing, dancing. They only want to go in for reality shows and all. Now what can be done and where does the writer stand in all this? Well, believe in me, writer today is mere a listener or more so a typist, a listener and a typist is a writer of television. There's a joke around, the best writer in TV is the one who listens. He listens to the producer to cut down on production cost, he listens to the executive producer and cuts down the role of an actor, as Rajeji said, as he or she is throwing a lot of tantrums, he listens to the creative director as all shadi halls are booked and with no more money left, shadi can only be done in the court. He listens to the channel to incorporate feedback of the marketing team, he listens to the channel head as there's a frustrated writer in him steaming up to see his or her ideas on screen because he couldn't make it. The one who nods the most, please listen, the one who nods most is the best writer in television. The one who argues is a confused writer, the one who brings novelty, should better sit at home and write novels as uh, Atish said. I still remember Soap Queen confessing in front of me. My Bahadur can be the best writer because he doesn't think he has an attitude to listen. But if in case we have to begin, as we have to begin, Rajesh he said, where to begin? What are the producers? Can they be of some help? I believe, yes, they can take the first initiative. If they match up the passion of making money along with telling good story, the seed of change can be, can be seen. The best producer is the one who keeps the production value high and takes the rest of the execution and working dictation from the channel. Today, is, that's the definition of the best producer. So what is missing is passion, objective, and attitude matching the responsibility of blowing in wind of change, and initiative can start. I coaxed a successful producer a lot of time to pitch some good theme-driven stories. He, she said, relax, baby. For me, every episode is a film. There has to be drama, there has to be dance, there has to be humor, there has to be rona dhona, and breeze bang on with the new trouble in life for protagonist. I realized she was right, it works that way, but she was the one who I also believe can bend the rules. But someone has to take the first step. How about writers? Well, they can only pump in fire if they have a motto. For the writer, fraternity and the rest, you know, this is something new which I don't discuss. For the writer, which includes, you know, some way, everyone, I take myself into account. For the writer, fraternity and the rest, TV has become a medium only to make money. I have been suggested by many of my senior colleagues, beta, develop the tendency to listen. Establish yourself. See, Mr. X has got a flat, a car, all out of TV. This is the age. The quicker you make, the more you have chances to make big in films, as you secure. Ask anyone, why are you doing TV? The reply comes, just to make money. The other reply might be, it's my piggy ride to films. If you ask someone, sir, why don't you pitch your that concept for TV? The reply comes, dude, keep the best work for films. And future, better write what you're asked to. Mediocrity rules in TV. It's better to remain fool in the kingdom of fools. That also leads to another question. If the platter is full of non-veg food, how will you taste, how you'll taste but sense vegetarian food? I mean to say the good content never reaches people. So they are left with no choice. If there's a chance, people are ready to accept it as it happened with the reality shows like Indian Idol or shows like Jassi and Balika Badu. You present something no novel to the people and they are gonna accept it. Still, there are innumerable writers making good money in TV and films and film colleague, as Rajesh Ji has already mentioned, you know, they give damn about them. Now, what about the people who are sitting there at the channel head? They have hardly read anything. They don't know who Prem Chand is. They have no idea of literature. The ladies still do better who are sitting in the television channel because they have read all the Mills and Boons and desire series novels. I still remember a lot of colleagues of mine approaching Ekta Kapoor as a writer, creative head, but their intention, I'm talking about the quality of the writers, but the intention was to be around her 
impress her by their look, clothes, makeup, and overall persona so that they can get a chance to act in television. So rarely people want to become writers per se. A good example is a present creative head who ended up becoming programming director of a satellite channel. See, here's the quality of TV. But undoubtedly, there are good ones as well. Only the route for them is indeed tough. As in cinema, so in films, majority of writers have limited reason. Reason, they are not well versed in corporate English, or their sage look and unshaved beard look is disliked by uptown honkos. But I said in one of my poems, Inhi galiyon se guzar kar tumhye apne apna jahan tak jana hai. Just to uh, point out, there is another set of quality writers who prefer living in penury but don't compromise. They fight for quality but they are stopped because they are not good narrators, they can't take example from English films, they have not seen DVD of Grey's Anatomy and they don't relate to Sujal as Shah Rukh Khan and Tulsi as Madhya Dikshit from Beta. Still, we need a change. What can be done? What can the concerned members of writer fraternity do? They can stick around. Wait for the storm of dust to get over, take on the bouncer, save their wicket, still keep their faith upright to tell good story. I'll just wind up what Harivan Shrai Bachchan said. Madhiralai jane ko ghar se, chalta hai peene wala. Kits pat se jaun as manjas, meh hai wo bhola bhala. Alag alag pat batla te sab, par mein ye batlata hoon. Raah pakar tu ek chala chal, pa jayega madhushala. Thank you. Kal ke... प्रेमचंद हम उनसी पुराने पुराने राइटरों के नाम लें जो आज कल बनने जा रहे हैं आप में से आप टाइपराइटर ले लें और उंगलियां घसाएं और बात सुनें और टाइप करें और इसके बाद कोई सवाल हो तो इनसे पूछें सर मेरा नाम हर्षा जगदीश है आप सब की बातें सुनें आप सब के ऑब्जर्वेशंस जानें आप सब ने जो so, हम सबके दिल की बात है मैं इस उम्मीद से आई थी कि मुझे यहां से चाहे सारे नहीं तो एक दो सॉल्यूशंस मिलेंगे जैसे कि सब ने बताया सबका एक ही दुख है चैनल इंटरफेरेंस चैनल इंटरफेरेंस जो है उसको हम अवॉइड नहीं कर सकते उसके बारे में हम इतना जैसे कहते हैं कि इतने कमेंट भी नहीं कर सकते क्योंकि हम जितना अपने प्रोड्यूसर डायरेक्टर को मानते हैं चैनल भी प्रोड्यूसर है, सो हम उनको निगलेक भी नहीं कर सकते, अवॉइड भी नहीं कर सकते, फिर भी हम सब इसी छाछ के चले हुए हैं कि हमें उनकी सुननी पड़ती है और हमारी क्रिएटिविटी कहीं ना कहीं डैमेज होती है, तो इसका सॉल्यूशन क्या है? खास करके जिस तरह से राजेश जी ने बताया कि बालिका बतु, आतिश � शायद हम सबसे बहुत ज़्यादा फाइटर हैं, जो कि चैनल से अपनी बात मनवा सकें। क्वेश्चन ही पूछ रहे हैं। समझ गए। एक सेकंड, एक सेकंड। तो हमें आप सब से अगर कुछ सजेशन मिले, I know ये सब एक तरह के बिजनेस सिक्रेट होते हैं, पर हमें एक सॉल्यूशन चाहिए। जैसा कि अभी मैंने आप बताया कि बहुत जल्दी एक वर्� वर्कशॉप कम कॉन्फ्रेंस जिसमें कि मॉडल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट पे कॉपीराइट को रॉयल्टीज को लेके सारी बातें की जानी हैं और मॉडल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वर्कआउट हो रहा है जो कि ईसी से पास होके जो राइटर्स एसोसिएशन की ईसी से पास होके फेडरेशन के पास में जाएगा फिर फेडरेशन उसका इवेल्यूएशन करके प्रोड्यूसर्स के साथ में मीटिंग करके और एक किसी नतीजे पे पहुंच के एक बीच का रास्ता अख्तियार करके कहीं पे सॉल्यूशन पे पहुंच के उसका इंप्लीमेंट कराया जाएगा ये कोशिश है एफडब्ल्यू है कि और इसके लिए आप सबका सपोर्ट चाहिए इफ यू लिसन केयरफुली द आंसर वाज बिटवीन द लाइंस सॉल्यूशन वाज बिटवीन द लाइंस कुछ लोगों को वो करना पड़ेगा या हमें कुछ वक्त वो करना पड़ेगा जो राजेश जी कह रहे हैं और कुछ वक्त वो करना पड़ेगा जो अरशद जी कह रहे हैं कहने का मतलब ये है कि लिसन वैल्यू यू लिसन एंड राइट वैल्यू यू राइट मिडल पाथ लेना पड़ेगा लिखते वक्त प्रेशर्स को हावी नहीं होने देना है सुनते वक्त सजेशंस को सुन लेना है यही एक कला है यही एक बैलेंस है यही एक संतुलन है आपने अभी कहा कि मैं जब से राइटर बना तो मेरा क्वेश्चन है कि क्या राइटर बना जा सकता है और इज इट इन बॉन नहीं नहीं मेरा बहुत क्लियर है राइटिंग इज इन बॉन इट्स अ टैलेंट यू आर बॉन विथ आई रियली डोंट इट्स माय पर्सनल थिंग कि आप सीख भले आप उसको निखार सकते हैं लेकिन जिस तरह एक फास्ट एक स्विमर स्विमर होता है सचिन तेंदुलकर इज इन बॉन टैलेंट राइटिंग इज अ टैलेंट एंड द प्रॉब्लम जो हम इस इंडस्ट्री में फेस करते हैं कि एवरीबडी इज अ राइटर 
मुझे फाइट मास्टर ने कहा है कि यार मैं आई एम अ गुड राइटर यू नो लेकिन यार वो बैठ के लिखना नहीं आता मुझसे बस आई ऑलमोस्ट वॉन्ट टेल एम सर मैं भी बहुत अच्छा बैट्समैन हूँ बस क्या है कि बॉल बैट से कनेक्ट नहीं होती तो ये एक एटीट्यूड है राइटर्स के थ्रू कि हर कोई लिख सकता है जो बहुत ही गलत है इट इज इट इज अ फेंटेस्टिकली स्पेशलाइज जॉब एंड आई थिंक यू आर बॉर्न अ राइटर एंड इफ यू नॉट बॉर्न अ राइटर एंड इफ यू आई मीन यू नो इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू बी ईजी तो आई वुड वॉन्ट टू से दैट and and it will prove uh, you'll know within time okay. any other question yeah uh, hi yeah. this is shikha uh, this is a question that i really want to ask what opinion does the indian television industry that includes the director producer and even for that matter the script writers have about the indian audience do you think they are a lot of intelligent people or they're a bunch of fools ye kaun jawab dega hame ek baat हमें अपने आप से एक बात ये कहनी बहुत ज़रूरी है कि टेलीविज़न देखने वाली जनता ही है जो सिनेमा देखती है ये बहुत बड़ा मिथ है कि वो कोई और लोग जो है घर में बैठे टेलीविज़न देख रहे हैं ये गलत बात है अगर ऐसा होता तो सैटेलाइट राइट्स सिनेमा के सैटेलाइट राइट्स के लिए चैनल इतनी लड़ाइयाँ नहीं करती वो सेम जनता है सो दे आर नॉट अ बंच ऑफ फूल्स दे आर नाइव येस यू कैन से दैट बिकॉज नाउ द ऑडियंस बेस हैज बिकम सो लार्ज वी हैव एंटर द हिंटर 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 लैंड ऑफ इंडिया वहां पे भी टेलीविजन आना शुरू हो गया है सो प्रोबेबली दे आर नाइव एंड दे आर न्यू टू टेलीविजन बट दे आर सर्टनली नॉट अ बंच ऑफ फूल्स एंड एंड दे विल एक्सेप्ट गुड टेलीविजन यू नो इट्स जस्ट एन अटेम्प्ट दैट एवरीबडी हैज टू कलेक्टिवली मेक एंड आई विल रिपीट माई सेल्फ दैट आई डिड फेस ऑल द प्रॉब्लम दैट द जेंटलमैन हियर सेट एंड एंड राजेश जी ने जो सब बताया विच इज वाई एग्जैक्टली मी दैट्स मी एंड माई पार्टनर जे डी वी फेस द सेम प्रॉब्लम and that's when we decide that we are going to together make a body and face all these problems and see to it that nobody is going to sit over our heads and tell us what to do and we did succeed today when we get writers into our fold we try and provide them with all those things which we never got when we were struggling as writers which is exactly what i'm trying to say like vijay tendulkar ji ne agar kaha you know we were, it was quoted ki agar aap writer ho aur satisfied nahi ho aapke kaam ke execution se to director ban jao humne yahi socha to hum producer bhi ban gaye that that is that simple and you can continue doing what you want to do and you will find an audience no matter what because the audience certainly is not a fool uh, i have a question uh. my name is tina um basically this is a question about television trends uh, like you said this is the era of dailies uh, but dailies don't necessarily lend themselves to a certain quality of writing do you think we could ever go back to the weekly uh, writing era i mean some concepts don't lend themselves that well to a daily so is there a point in pursuing writing towards a weekly uh, kind of format see when television started it started with the weeklies if you know and when the first daily soap started the two of them started shanti and swabhiman i wrote swabhiman nobody wanted to write so daily soaps at that time everybody wanted to write serials the point is that soap operas is far more habit forming than a serial and because it 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 lends to more stickiness in television the soap trend started okay what is happening now is that because there is so much competition happening channels have started experimenting so yes there are days like artish produce a brilliant serial ek packet umeed which i thought is one of the best shows to have come in television in the last Six months. Now, it didn't do as well in the terms of ratings, but the attempt is there. The attempt is being made by channels today to try and diversify, try and get into different forms. Let me also tell you that the new trend that is going to come, which I foresee and which is already happening in channels, is this whole concept of film for television is starting. Now, that's a whole new genre. which has not been explored but channels are exploring it there are films being written for television there are attempts being made so the point has come as artist said when he was speaking that the time has come the time is ripe now for experimenting for trying different concepts and channels are willing to listen because they want to differentiate themselves they cannot be part of the herd they've realized that if they follow the herd mentality they're not going to get the ratings so yes 
तो जो स्क्रिप्ट्स आती हैं जो अपने स्क्रिप्ट्स होती हैं टी की वो तो खुद ही इतनी स्कैटर्ड हैं डायलॉग कोई और लिख के भेजता है स्क्रीन प्ले कोई और भेजता है तो कहीं ना कहीं वो सोल वहीं से बिखर जाती है जो आपकी जो सीरियल की जो सोल है तो कहीं ना कहीं ये भी रीज़न है अपनी टी राइटिंग के लाइक डाउन जाने का सवाल क्वेश्चन तो इसका मतलब क्या कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में ऐसा कुछ ला रहे हैं क्या कि मतलब इसको एक ही राइटर ऐसा कंबाइन करके ऐसा कुछ करें मैं उस ये जो सोप आप रहा है और बेसिकली लग रहा है कि जनरल एंटरटेनमेंट चैनल के जो राइटर्स हैं उन्हीं के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू आगे रखे जा रहे हैं टेलीविजन पर लिखने की और भी और भी अवसर हैं आप डॉक्यूमेंट्री फिल्म बना सकते हैं बहुत हज़ार चीज़ें की जा सकती हैं दुनिया भर के चैनल हैं लेकिन इशू यहाँ यह है कि सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट इशू है जो राजेश पांडे इसके ऊपर काम कर रहे हैं कि दुबे, हम दुबे, हम दुबे। सारे राजेश दुबे माफ़ करिएगा मेरा नाम भी राजेश कुमार सिंह है और मैंने डेली सो पापेरा की शुरुआत लिखने की शुरुआत जो है उसके साथ जुड़ा रहा मैं शांति लिखा था मैंने तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि डेली सोप वगैरह जो लिखने वाला है उसको बहुत गंभीरता से एक राइटर को लेने की आवश्यकता नहीं है लेकिन जो पेमेंट के मसले हैं जो रॉयल्टी के मसले हैं वो मसले हमें जरूर गंभीरता से लेने चाहिए और बहुत ज़रूरी है कि जो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट जो मॉडल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट है उसको बनाया जाए और जो मशहूर राइटर हैं जो बड़े बड़े प्रोग्राम लिख रहे हैं जिनकी वजह से वो प्रोग्राम रुक जाएंगे और जो राइटर प्रोड्यूसर हैं अगर वो उसमें जुड़ जाए ठीक तरीके से और वो मॉडल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट तैयार हो जाए हम उसको एनफोर्स कर सकें तो एक बहुत बड़ी सफलता होगी हमारे लिए जहाँ तक क्रिएटिविटी का सवाल है वो क्षेत्र है उसमें अलग अलग तरीके से उसको अप्रोच करेगा कोई चैनल वाल का भी कुछ कहेगा आप कुछ कहेंगे प्रोड्यूसर कुछ कहेगा वो सब चलता रहेगा ओके okay. देखिए एक वार्निंग दे के बंद करते हैं कि लेडी ने पूछा डेली शोप के बारे में तो विनोद ने जवाब दिया लेकिन एक वार्निंग और मैं देता हूँ बंद अच्छा लिखना शुरू कर दो सब मिलके नहीं तो नच बलिए बहुत बनेंगे थैंक यू सो मच